Hello, Alan Steady here again with Firewalls.com. In this video, we'll be discussing device access on our Sophos XG firewall and how you can reduce your firewall's exposure to the outside world. Defining and enforcing access controls is by far one of the most fundamental components to network security. By understanding and defining who can access what eliminates the guesswork and gives us a little more confidence in our security. These are small but necessary precautions that we must take to ensure our security implementation is sound. Jumping into the web admin of our Sophos XG firewall under System and selecting Administration, followed by the Device Access tab, we can see some of the system services hosted by our Sophos XG firewall. On our Y axis to the left here, we can see that we have our zones, LAN, WAN, DMZ, and any other kind of custom zones that you may have created. And on our x-axis up here at the top, we can see the system service being hosted by our Sophos XG firewall. The little checkbox here indicates that this particular service is allowed from the said zone, and an empty box here means that it's not allowed. Pretty simple and straightforward, right? And scrolling down here just a little bit, we can see our local service ACL exception rules, which is what ultimately is going to create our override for these global settings. So a check mark right here means that this has globally been allowed. Everybody on the WAN zone would be able to reach our Sophos XG firewall's web admin, as well as gain shell SSH access which are pretty big vulnerabilities, so in this example here, we'll be primarily focusing on the WAN zone. So again, scrolling down here to our local services, our ACL exceptions, we can select Add here. For this particular rule, say we have a gateway monitoring service out there that we need to allow ping to. So in this example here, we'll go ahead and just call this our gateway monitoring. We can define our position of our rule. We can just leave this set to the bottom. Next, defining our source zone. So this is where is traffic coming from. This is going to be our WAN zone. We can select our network source hosts, or we can create new ones. I've already got our gateway monitoring host created. Just go ahead and select this guy. Select our destination host. This is going to be the interface that is ultimately terminating this connection. So in our example, this is our WAN interface. And lastly, we will select our services. And our gateway monitoring utilizes ping. So we'll select that service, followed by our action, which we want to allow. So here we can go ahead and say accept, followed by save. We'll continue on with this example by locking down our management facilities, such as the HTTPS and SSH. So say in our example here, we've outsourced the management of our firewall to, say, firewalls.com. Again, we can adjust our rule position here. Enter in a description. Select our source zone again, which again is going to be our WAN, followed by our source hosts or networks, and the destination. Again, where is the traffic going to, and our services. Select the action, followed by save. Okay, so now that we've defined two of our local services ACL exceptions, one allowing web admin and SSH access for our remote management team, and the second our gateway monitoring host. So what we can actually do now is scroll up here to our local service ACLs, and in the appropriate zone, we can go ahead and disable these global settings. Select Apply. Great, so we can see that we've updated our device access settings. You can continue on with this with different zones, different networks, and get really granular with our access controls. And that's really it. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up below. If you have any comments on future video topics, we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a message or comment below, and be sure to get subscribed to our YouTube channel so you're notified of future video releases, and come check us out at firewalls.com. That's www.firewalls.com. Get secure. Stay secure.